We present My Favorite Husband, a new series starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning and based on the delightful stories of Isabel Scott Rorick's gay, sophisticated Mr. and Mrs. Cougat, two people who live together and like it. <laughs> in on the Cougats and see what they're doing. The house looks normal for this time of the morning. The breakfast table is set. The morning paper's on the table. Katie is out in the kitchen and... Hey, wait a minute. There's a sign pinned to the kitchen door. It says, Katie, please don't make any noise. Say, what's going on around here? There goes Liz Cougat tiptoeing into the kitchen. Katie, please, didn't you see the sign? Yes, Mrs. Cougat. Then why are you making so much noise? It's not me, Mrs. Cougat. It's the bacon. I told it to be quiet, but it just lies there in the skillet and hisses at me. <laughs> well, turn the fire off. I don't want Mr. Cougat to wake up until it's so late he has to rush to work. This is the morning he's supposed to look over my checkbook. I figured it was when I saw today marked on the calendar with a skull and crossbones. <laughs> sort of like Blue Monday or Gloomy Sunday, isn't it, Mrs. Cougat? It's worse. If George wakes up, today will be sickening Saturday. <laughs> oh, dear, George gets so upset when I'm overdrawn. Oh, how does he act on the months when you're not overdrawn? I don't know. I never had one. <laughs> I used to have the same trouble, but my first husband, Clarence, had a wonderful system. He wrote all the checks he wanted and was never overdrawn. Really? How'd he manage that? He didn't have an account at the bank. <laughs> oh, good old Clarence. I haven't seen him in five years. What's he doing? Ten years. <laughs> oh, oh I, I think I hear Mr. Cougat. He's up. Oh, darn it. Never mind the bacon and eggs, Katie. After George looks at my arithmetic, all he'll want is black coffee and Alka-Seltzer. Yes, ma'am. Here he comes. Wish me luck, Katie. Good morning, dear. Good morning, George, darling. How's my little hubby this morning? Hmm? Hmm. What's going on here? You're entirely too sweet. Oh, uh, well, George, you don't expect me to go through the day without a kiss from my, my handsome husband, do you? No, that, that would be tough. Yes. Mm. <laughs> you know, George, they say the more we kiss, the better we get. We improve with age. What did you say, Grandma? Oh, you like the way I kiss, George? Mm hmm. <laughs> how do I kiss? Come on, George, tell me, how do I kiss? Like you were way overdrawn. <laughs> Oh, George. Come on, honey, let's get to the bad news. You know how you could make me happy, Liz? How? Oh. Some months say to me, George, my accounts are in perfect shape. I can say it right now. George, my accounts are in perfect shape. They are? No, but I want to make you happy. <laughs> I might not be overdrawn, George. Well, let's uh, look at your checkbook. Mm-hmm. 12 and 4, 16, carry the balance to... Oh, you've made a mistake in your arithmetic. No! <laughs> yes, dear. Nine and five haven't made 18 in years. Says who? Oh, Liz. If you don't believe me, count it out on your fingers. Oh, wait a minute. I have to take one shoe off. Stop that. George, I have so much trouble adding figures with nine in them. I don't like nine. Control yourself, Cougat. Now, tell me about it, dear. Well, I don't like nines, but I like ten. Mm. So I, I make the nines into fives and multiply by two and then subtract one. <laughs> George, stop shaking your head like that. Liz, you won't believe this, but that's the hard way. Now, we want to add nine and five. Now, first, let's take ten and five. That's 15, right? If you say so, dear. I say so. Now... Ten and five is fifteen. I'll think of nine and five. Now, what's the difference? That's what I say. What's the difference? Oh, no. Because <laughs> you don't even know the first thing about mathematics. I do, too. Addition is forward and subtraction is backward. Oh. <laughs> what's multiplication? Sideways? 
<laughs> no, Smarty. Multiplication is when you take a lot of little things and scrunch them into a big lump. I must be dreaming. And division is when you take a big thing and mash it into tiny pieces. Oh. Look, let's get back to this nine and five monster and see what you can scrunch it into. Now, now think a minute. Now, what's nine and three? Oh, anyone knows that. Twelve. Yeah. All right. Now, what's nine and four? Thirteen. So, what's nine and five? Give me a pencil and paper. Oh. <laughs> I'll skip it. Never mind. We'll go on to something else. Well, at least you've been writing down what the checks were for. Uh huh. Let's see. Club dues, money to Katie, grocer, hairdress. Wait a minute. What's this D I C R thirty nine fifty? D I C R. Yeah. What what does that stand for? D I C R. Oh, I know. Dress I couldn't resist. <laughs> And you know, you should be glad I bought that dress, too, because I made $20 doing it. You... you made $20? Absolutely. I bought the dress on sale at Kramer's for $39.50. And the identical same dress is selling at Gordon's for $59.50. So I made $20. But you don't have that $20. Oh, I know I don't. I spent it on a hat to go with a dress. <laughs> George? George? I'll just sit there and stare like that. Say something to me. Hello, lady. What do you want? Ah, George! <laughs> oh, this, this is enough to test a man's sanity. Well, how can I figure any answers with the vice president of the bank staring at me? Well, I'll tell you what the answer is. You're going to take that dress back. Oh. Well, I hate to be harsh, but you must learn the value of money. But it's such a cute dress. I'm sorry. It's navy blue with white polka dots. No, Liz. It's got a little white collar and a sash in the back. You're breaking my heart. But crying won't get you anywhere. Uh, uh, well, it doesn't hurt to try. Then you'll take the dress back. Yes, George. Yeah. If I take it back, will it almost balance my books? Hmm, yes. Yeah. Then they weren't in too bad shape, were they? Mm, no. <laughs> what would you like for breakfast, George? Black coffee and Alka-Seltzer. Oh, <laughs> uh, now let's see. Where's the... Oh, pardon me, miss. Could you tell me where the refund department is? Well, there goes somebody's commission. It's uh, on the left, way down in front. Thank you. Oh, that's Corey Cartwright. Oh, Corey! Say, uh, are you talking about that big blonde fellow over there? Yes, Corey Cartwright. He's a good friend of ours. Oh, and incidentally, quite a man with a lady. He has loads of girlfriends. Really? Mm -hmm. I'd like to see some of them sometimes. Why? He spent the last half hour trying to pick up that wax model. <laughs> Don't bother me, Liz. I'm trying to scrape up an acquaintance with that blonde in the mink coat. Well, I'm afraid even you won't get any place with her, Corey. She's a store dummy. I thought something was funny. When I tried to hold her hand, it came off. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Did anyone ever tell you you were a complete fool? Yes, but you can't believe anything a woman says. <laughs> Say, let's, let's go someplace cozy for lunch, Liz. Just the two of us. I might even ask you to marry me. I'm already married. I should hope so. I don't take chances when I ask that question. <laughs> I thought so. I'll have lunch with you if you wait a minute, Corey. I have to return a dress and get my money back. All right. I'll go over and watch the fashion show. A model in it is crazy about me, so as long as I'm here, I'll give her a break. Don't strain yourself. You ought to see her, Liz. What a figure. Hot number, huh? Hot number? They won't let her model in a bathing suit because the automatic fire sprinklers turn on. <laughs> fingers burned. I'll be right back. All right, Liz. If I'm not here, I'll be hanging around the lingerie department. Naturally. Is this the refund department? Yes. Can't, <laughs> can't you see the sign on the door? If you're not satisfied with your purchase, your money will be <gasps> cheerfully refunded. <laughs> cheerfully refunded. Yes. Who does this cheerful refunding? 
I do. My name is Quigley. Okay, laughing boy, you asked for it. My name is Cougat, and I'd like to return... Never mind, I know. Everybody who ever comes in here wants to return something. They hand me dress. They hand me shoes. They hand me bags. They hand me coats. I hope they hand you a handkerchief once in a while. All day long, I make out return slips. I had to go to the doctor last week. I was seeing charger plates in front of my eyes. Well, I'll get out of your way. Just give me my money and watch me disappear quickly, Quigley. Certainly. I'll make out the form. The dress was too large for you, huh? No. Too small? No, it was just the right size. The color didn't match the drapes in your bedroom when you got it home? <laughs> No, the color was wonderful. The style was bad. No, the style was excellent. Your cat was allergic to the material. I don't have a cat. <laughs> Mrs. Cougar, let me get this straight. What, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, the dress was the right size. The cut was fine. The style was wonderful. The color was out of this world. It was a dream dress. Yes, I just loved it. Then so what are you doing in here? <laughs> I want my money back. Your sign says your money is refunded if you aren't satisfied. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Kugat. I can't give you the money back on that dress. Why not? Because you are satisfied. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, oh, I forgot. It, it, it has an ink spot on it. Show it to me. Give me your pen and turn your back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. There's something very fishy going on here, Miss Kugat. Now, be honest with me. Just why do you want your money back? Well, promise you won't tell anyone. I promise. This morning, I had my accounts gone over, and there was a shortage in my books. Uh-huh, sticky fingers. I beg your pardon? Oh, this is serious, Mrs. Kuga. Tell me, this person who checked your books, could he have made a mistake? Oh, no, no. He's vice president of the bank, but this time he's really mad. This time? You mean this has happened before? Oh, yes, yes, but usually if I kiss him, he forgets all about it. Uh-huh, oh, finagling in the highest places. <laughs> Mrs. Cougar, I'll refund your money on one condition. What is it? Give up this life of crime. What? Turn to the straight and narrow. Crime does not pay. But I... You're too young for this kind of thing. Oh, no. How did I get into this? <laughs> promise me and I'll refund your money. I promise. I promise. After all, there's no future in it. Pretty soon every bank in the country will have a Dick Tracy television burglar alarm. <laughs> You've made a wise choice. Thank you. Here's your money, Mrs. <laughs> Thank you. Glory, <laughs> I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. No, I've been in the lingerie department. I've seen everything in this store right down to the foundation. <laughs> I get it. I got my refund, too. Oh, good. Let's see, 20, 30, 40, 50. Wait a minute. 59, 50. They gave me too much money. That doesn't sound like Gordon's to me. Gordon's? Isn't this Kramer's? It was Gordon's when we came in. I presume it still is. Oh, I brought my dress to the wrong store. I paid thirty-nine fifty for it at Kramer's, and now Gordon's has given me fifty-nine fifty. <gasps> well, there's only one thing for me to do. Sure, run like the Dickens. No, <laughs> no, I have to take the money back. It isn't fair to Gordon. Or is it? Uh oh, <laughs> here it comes. This ought to be good. Well, now look. I bought the dress at Kramer's, and I paid for it, so they aren't out anything, right? Right. And I brought it back to Gordon's, and they'll sell the dress for the same amount they paid me, so they won't be out anything, right? Right. And I've got $20 extra. Liz, you're a genius. Oh, hey, where are you going? Back to Kramer's for more dresses. <laughs> Dress, please. That navy blue one with the white polka dots. All right. What size? Oh, any size will do. Doesn't matter. Any size? Well, who's it for? A friend. What's the matter? Don't friends come in sizes anymore? <laughs> Just give me one of those, please. Well, could she wear a size 20, large? Yes, that'll be fine. How about a small size 10? Well, that'll do just as well. Boy, I'd like to meet that friend of yours. <laughs> Didn't I sell you one of these dresses yesterday? Yes, and, and I'd like another one. You better make it two. Two? What are you doing, operating a black market in blue dresses? How come you two want two more dresses when you got one just like it? 
Well, do you really want to know how come I too? <laughs> I'm one of the Andrews sisters. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Which one are you, Patty, Maxine, or Laverne? Neither. I'm their brother, Dana. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Here's your dresses, but understand they're on sale. You can't return them. Don't worry, I won't return them. Just charge these and... Say, how many more dresses like this do you have? Those are the last, dearie. Oh, that's too bad. I could have handled 20 or 30 more this afternoon. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, Sadie, did you see that dame that just left? She's nuts. <laughs> Corey? George, what are you doing at Gordon? Oh, I got to thinking about a dress I made Liz return this morning. I guess I was a little rough on her, so I decided to buy her one just like it for a surprise. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I tried to buy the dress Liz wants over at Kramer's, but the sales girl told me she sold the last three to the Andrews sisters. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't bump into Liz at Kramer's, George. She went over there with something on her mind. Someone refunded her too much money or something. Oh, Liz and her mathematics. Honestly, Corey, she has no idea of finances at all. Oh, well, women. Oh, why can't they be like men? We always know just how much money we have and where it is at all times. Mm -hmm. Uh, Corey. Yes, George? Say, uh, uh, would you lend me 50 bucks? I don't have any money with me. <laughs> sure. No, just how much you have and where it is at all times, huh? Yes, I have $74 and I left my wallet home on the bureau. Oh, miss, I'd like to return these two dresses and get a refund. Didn't you ask me that once before today? Yes. Well, the answer hasn't changed. You go to the same office and see Mr. Quigley. Uh, well, that's just it. I'd rather not see Mr. Quigley. And I think he'd just as soon not see me. Uh, if he saw me with these dresses, he'd scream. Well, uh, the door to the left of Mr. Quigley's is Mr. Brown's, his assistant. Thank you. I'll go in there. How do you do, Mr. Brown? I'd like to... Oh, dear. Mr. Brown's out right now. Oh! Oh, it's you. What do you want? Mr. Quigley, I'd like to get a refund on these. Ah! <laughs> I told her you would. Two, two more, Mrs. Cougar? Yes. The same kind? Yes. Oh, I can't stand it any longer. I can't stand it any longer. I should never have taken this job. I was so happy in ladies' underwear. <laughs> I'd like my money, please. I was so happy. That was so peaceful. All you could hear was the rustle of a silk chemise, broken now and then by the soft snap of a garter. I'd like my money, please. Oh, the cute little screams when my tape measure was too cold. <laughs> I'd like my money, please. Mrs. Cougar, I'm not one to quibble over uh, you. Pardon me, Mr. Quigley, uh, but I've been checking inventory on dress number 808. Uh, that's the very one we have under discussion here. Yeah, well, how many did you buy? Uh, 35. I thought so. Then how come now we got 36? Well, goodbye, Mr. Quigley. Sit down, Mrs. Cougar. <laughs> I don't know where you got these dresses, but I'm not going to accept them. And what's more... I'm going to give you back the dress you brought me this morning. And Mrs. Gugart. Yes? I'd like my money, please. Oh, young lady, could I see those three dresses you have over your arm? Oh, were you talking to me? Yes, I, I tried to buy one of those over in the department, but they didn't have my size. Oh, I do love blue and white polka dot dresses, don't you? Love them. I collect them. <laughs> uh, what size are these? Oh, well, you probably think I'm the clerk. These dresses aren't for... Si what size do you wear? Well, I'm sort of tiny. I wear a 10. Well, fortunately, I have a 10. 
And you'd better hurry. This offer is not likely to be repeated. Oh, and I'll take it. I need it to go to a dance tonight. <laughs> You're going to a dance? Oh, I'd fool you. You should see me dance with my partner. We get around like a couple of 65-year-olds. What kind of dances do you dance? The Townsend Stomp or the Methuselah Wiggle? Uh, we all went to Arthur Murray's and learned the Lindy Crawl. <laughs> you mean the Lindy Hop? That's the way we do it. <laughs> uh, how much is the dress? Uh, 59.50. Well, I'll take it. Here's the money. I'll just run along. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> All right. See you around the bandstand. Valterini. <laughs> Dig me later, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Say, maybe I can get rid of these other dresses that way. Oh, hmm. I think I like these dresses with the blue and white polka dots. How much are they? Uh, 59.50. Hey, lady. Were you addressing me? Yeah, stepping a little closer, you're blocking traffic. <laughs> now, don't buy that dress. I'm in a position to sell you the very same thing at a sensational reduction in price. Please, this is my customer. Get away, kid. You bother me. <laughs> I'm going to be the manager about this. Well, is there something wrong with this dress? Who are you? You heard of me. Honest Liz got the biggest used dress dealer in town. <laughs> used dress? Oh, absolutely not. It was just worn by an elderly couple of Pasadena. <laughs> well, I don't... Uh, look, give me $39.50 and I'm losing money on the deal. Well, I can't pass up a bargain like that. Here's the money. And here's your dress. Sure you couldn't use two of them? No, thanks. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Come back tomorrow and I'll give myself a hot foot and have a fire sale. <laughs> <laughs> about people like you. Where did you come from? <laughs> Young lady, I am a floor walker. You stole this girl's customer. I did not. Go ahead, search me. <laughs> Young lady, I don't like your shenanigans. What's the matter with them? <laughs> I have a good mind to take you into Mr. Quigley. Oh, no, not that, please. <laughs> well, all right, I'll give you one more chance. Go and wait on that customer over there. Oh, I can't wait on him. That's George. Yeah, what's that? I said, I, I can't wait to sell him something by George. <laughs> well, go ahead. I'll be watching you. Here I go. Maybe this will hide my face. Please, put back that hat. Oh. I was just showing it to a lady. I need it more than you do. Well, what are you putting it on for? The veil hides your face. I'm in mourning. <laughs> Gee, I hope George doesn't recognize my voice. <clears throat> uh, say, can I help you, mister? Sir? Uh, you want I should show you some merchandise, maybe? Uh. <laughs> Uh, say, uh, isn't it unusual for a sales girl to wear a black hat with a veil? Oh, that. Yeah, it is kind of unusual. You see, I'm in mourning. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. It was a catastrophe. <laughs> to say nothing of being a tragedy. <laughs> well, uh, if you feel up to it, I'd like to see a dress like, uh, well, uh, like the one you have over your arm. Well, ain't that a coincidence for you, though? <laughs> I wonder if it'll fit my wife. Yeah, it's just her size. Huh? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I can just imagine what a fellow like you would be married to. I can just see her, you know, probably tall with maybe red hair and a beautiful figure and a gorgeous, <laughs> scintillating face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, have you got a bad imagination? <laughs> You don't have to get so upset about it. What's it to you? Well, I, I'm just very sensitive about my imagination, that's all. <laughs> Come on. I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Will you pardon me? Mr. Inner Tube has sprung a leak. What are you doing with that ridiculous hat on? Take it off this instant. Give me back that hat. No. Now you get back there. Well, any port in a storm. I hope this fits. I want to ask you a question, Miss... Oh, no! What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen anyone wearing a lampshade before? This is the craziest store I've ever been in. Now, look, do you want the dress or not? 
Yeah, well, I guess so. Uh, here's the money. Give it to me. Uh, I wish I was sure. I, I knew whether it fit her or not. Well, I'll tell you what. This dress will fit me perfectly. Does she happen to have a figure like mine, maybe? No, she's much dumpier than oh. you are. <laughs> Oh, she is. I mean, oh, she is? She wishes she had a figure like yours. And uh, <laughs> confidentially, so do I. Well, of all the... Oh! oh! Grab, grab that girl! Grab her, I say! She went that way! Did you like dinner, dear? Yes, fine. George, thanks for the dress. Hmm? What dress? The one you're going to surprise me with in a minute. Oh, you, you found the box in the closet? Yes, and I think you were very sweet to buy it for me. <laughs> oh, you should have seen the sales girl who waited on me. <laughs> she was a real creep. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, honey. Tomorrow I'll buy you something to wear on your head to go with the dress. Oh, George, a hat. No. A polka dot lampshade. What? You're a pretty rotten actress, Liz. Well, how do you like that? He knew about it all the time. <laughs> George, are you asleep yet? A minute ago, I would have said yes. I've been lying here trying to make up poems about the moon. Mm, congratulations. Here's how far I got. The moon is big. The moon is yellow. You finish it, George. And he lives alone, the lucky fellow. <laughs> well, that's not very romantic. The moon is bright. The moon is deep. Please shut up and go to sleep. Oh, George. Look at the man in the moon, George. Do you suppose he ever gets lonesome? Mm, I've never given it much thought. The only fun he has all year is when he meets the sun and they have an eclipse. <laughs> oh, Liz, I'm too tired to talk now. You haven't even kissed me goodnight. Speak to me in the language of love, George. All right. <laughs> Was that the language of love, George? Yes. Then just don't say anything. Let's just talk. 